A new version of the core engine will be released soon. It'll have multi-threaded rendering. Sounds interesting, but what is it? And what does it mean for the players? Let's find out. In update 1.0, the developers did an amazing job revamping the graphics. The game became more stunning. But the main achievement of the engine is optimization. The system requirements didn't change. The load was mainly focused on GPU. In many cases, the engine could push it up to 100%. Now it's time for CPUs. We didn't see much sense in implementing multi-threading. Our player base mainly had dual-core PCs. We are already using these two cores up to 100%. We have many tasks apart from rendering, like gameplay logic calculation, sound, physics and destruction processing, rendering and graphics themselves. This allows us to use up to 100% of the CPU. The situation changed over recent years. Manufacturers started releasing affordable multi-core CPUs. After releasing update 1.0, we knew it was time. We analyzed our player base again and saw that there was a pretty steady increase in the number of players with four-core and six-core CPUs. Quad-core CPUs have almost a 60% share there, about 60%. It means that these players, these users, already can feel some performance improvements by using multi-core PCs. At the moment, the graphics are calculated mostly on two cores, while one core performs all the necessary calculations for the current frame, like UI, objects, effects, lighting, shadows. The other core sends the previous frame calculations to the GPU. It all happens 30, 60, or even 120 times a second. The higher FPS the user's PC has, i.e. the more frames per second it generates, the smoother he perceives the image on screen. However, the absolute maximum FPS is not as important for the user as not having heavy FPS drops. When 120 FPS drops to 30, this is very noticeable. Even though 30 and 60 FPS is considered acceptable for playing, moreover, most of the console games are designed for 30 or 60 FPS. Now that most players have quad-core CPUs, multi-threading can be implemented into the game. Multi-threaded rendering to be precise. To do that, the engine must be taught to perform calculations simultaneously on all available cores, not consecutively. It was a hard task. On minimal settings, the CPU has to process many rendering tasks, and ultra settings has many more such tasks. The issue is that these tasks are unequal. Some are calculated faster than others. Many of them depend on each other, and the results of previous calculations are required to start the new ones. Most of the time was spent on teaching the engine to allocate tasks to different cores in such a way that it worked efficiently and sped up command preparation for the GPU. At the moment, the technology is being tested on a wide range of hardware, which takes much time, as range of hardware of our players is very wide. There are users with 15-year-old hardware, and there are some with brand new, top-of-the-range PCs. The majority of companies in the industry focuses on five to six years old hardware, and forget about the users with older parts. We don't forget these players. We don't try to improve the player's life, by making him buy the new, more expensive hardware. We are trying to get the best from the hardware that our players have currently. At the moment, test shows that technology works stably on different configurations. The performance improvement for a specific user depends on many factors. What version of the operating system is installed? How recently it was installed? What processor, motherboard and graphics card they have? For computers with weak processors and graphics cards, the performance boost will be minimal. If the processor is powerful and the graphics card is weak, there will be no significant improvement as well. The graphics card can be pushed to its limits, but if the processor is not multi-core, it won't display a better picture. 
On the contrary, if the processor is multi-core but not very powerful and the graphics card is powerful, the boost will be significant. Usually, well, it often happens that people replace graphics cards in their computers most frequently, while the processor is changed very rarely. Because changing the processor entails socket change and replacing of the DDR3 RAM with DDR4, and you need to buy all this, it's quite expensive. That's why users change their graphics card most often. You just pull it out, install the new one, and you don't need to do anything else. That's why most users will have CPU-bound systems. I mean, the processor is not able to unlock the graphics card potential. So what we have is that if this processor is multi-core with at least four cores, the multi-threaded rendering will help it. It will allow for a more balanced and heavier load on the processor. So it will unlock your graphics card potential better or more steadily. Multi-threaded rendering will be useful to those who play World of Tanks on laptops. Usually, there are several low-frequency cores and Turbo Boost technology in laptops. It increases the voltage on one core, temporarily increases its frequency, thus boosting its performance. But the problem is it can't work for long in this mode. It overheats and the throttling mode activates. What does it mean? This means the processor intentionally decreases the core frequency in order not to overheat the processor or reduce power consumption. So, a player can play with 120 FPS and suddenly their FPS rate drops to 60 or even 30. And they don't understand what's happening. Developers are bad, they say. Well, partly yes, because we use only one core. So, that's why we're trying to balance the load of cores for the multi-core computers so that the processor won't have to enable turbo boost and won't have to enable throttling. Because all cores are evenly loaded, for example by 25%, this is better than one core working at 100% for a short period of time. And while it might seem for some time that the FPS rate is similar, it's not stable. So as soon as the processor overheats, it will rapidly drop to the frequency that is possible for this processor. Evenly loaded cores will also help to reduce the laptop power consumption and increase the playtime using the battery charge. Implementing the graphics multi-threaded rendering is the first important step. Now, with the release of the multi-threaded rendering, most of our users will see the tendency for performance increase, but it's just the beginning. So, we will be able to use this available performance not only for the further graphics or FPS boost, but also other things. What are they? This can be a more complex gameplay the better or more complex graphics, with more details and nuances, the more complex destruction, and more advanced sound. So all this capacity we release will let us experiment in these areas to make the gameplay even more fascinating, while keeping the same system requirements. Our goal is to keep things for users with all range of hardware at the same level, or make them better, and at the same time, unlock the potential of more advanced hardware, so that players can see even more fascinating picture or gameplay. Now the developers can implement multi-threading in other game subsystems. The work on optimization and improvement of the core engine will continue. And a lot of interesting developments awaits us in the near future.